the Amuamua and the arrival of the first interstellar visitor near Earth. It just so happened at that time that um, Hurricane Maria came barreling through as a, hur a Category 5 hurricane headed straight toward Puerto Rico and damaged the world's largest and most powerful radio telescope, which it was so much more than that. Uh, as it went through, the Puerto Rico Arecibo Telescope was damaged right around the time that a Muamua ship came through. And shortly thereafter, something happened that finished off the telescope. The cable collapsed making it no longer available for scientific research. It stopped everything. The scientists said, had they not been given enough warning, and they used that, about the arrival of the Amuamua ship, which they called an asteroid, which we know it's not, they could have gathered a lot more data, um, even though they all came together and had that telescope in Puerto Rico not been taken out of commission during its arrival, arrival, they could have got a lot more data. But Hurricane Maria came through and rent their plans, rent all the gathering. So um, I'm going to come over here, you all, and um, there's something much greater. This happened, um, Hurricane Maria came through September the 17th of, um, let, me, let me just say this, September the 17th of 2017, you know what, it was around one year later that I documented the ships around the sun with the observatory shutdowns. Um, that's when my journey began. Um, I'm going to come right over here. And I know that um, they don't want very many people watching this video. That's why this didn't go out like it should have. But that's okay. Hello there, Apple Brooks. Um, hello, uh, Marcel. That's right. That's okay, you all. If you watch this video from a, um, if you watch this video as a repeat, I want you to share this video. Give this video a thumbs up because that was not a mere coincidence. Hello, Susan B. Honey. Um, it wasn't a coincidence. The timing of Hurricane Maria, the destruction of the Arecibo Telescope, and the arrival of the Yamuamua asteroid ship. Uh, and it's our first interstellar visitor to Earth. Uh, it was not a coincidence at all. It wasn't. I want to I wanna take you over here. This is how they explained it. The Yamuamua, the first interstellar asteroid observed from Earth. Um... The name is um, for the first messenger from afar. The first messenger from afar. This past month, don't tell me this, you all. Let me see. Yeah, this past month, um, a visitor passed through our solar system. And astronomers still observing it fade away into the night, hoping to gather more information as it leaves our solar system. It was a cosmic first. The first observed interstellar asteroid visitor uh, ship. We know that in our own solar system, leftover pieces of the early materials that formed the planets remain. Close to the sun, where it's too warm for ice to freeze solid, 
These leftovers are called asteroids. Farther out where the ice remains solid, these bodies become cores of possible comets. But it wasn't a comet because comets would break apart as they um, come toward the sun. And the strange thing is, with all the data that was gathered, there was an invisible force that was projecting it forward. And they don't know the source of that force that was pressing it forward. They don't know. Um, let me put this right here. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to copy, if you're just tuning in, I'm going to copy the link of that one right there. Um, and I'm going to put it right here. This is not going to be a long video because uh, it doesn't need to be long. It doesn't need to be long at all. Not at all. Around comes Hurricane Maria. Category 5 Maria makes landfall in Dominica September the 19th. Um, a hurricane warning was placed for Puerto Rico, Colabra, uh, Vequez. Maria is likely to affect Puerto Rico as an extremely dangerous hurricane. You can see it right here. It will produce rain, total rain accumulations up to 6 to 12 inches with isolated maximum amounts of 20 inches across the central and southern leeward islands, including Puerto Rico, U.S., and British Virgin Islands. I'm going to put the, the, the link right here for you all. I'm going to keep this short. I'm going to try my best to keep it short. It doesn't need to be long. Um, where are we at? Right here. Hurricane Maria shows up. Oh, look. CERN. Wow. They got CERN in the background. That's okay. That's okay. Um, Hurricane Maria. Right there. Um, and let's go over here. The Arecibo Telescope. Let's look at this. The observatory's 305-meter radio telescope is the largest single, single aperture telescope ever to be constructed. When functional, it carried out three major areas of research, radio astronomy, aeronomy, and radar observations of solar system objects. The telescope has been used in the James Bond movie, Golden Eye, uh, and in the, moon, in the film Contact with Sigourney Weaver. Is that with Sigourney? Or who? I don't know. It wasn't Sigourney Weaver. I forget who it was in the movie Contact. It received international recognition in 1999 when it began to collect data for SETI Home Project. Already suffered significant damage from Hurricane Maria in 2017 and earthquakes, as if that didn't finish it off, they send the earthquakes in 2019 and 2020. The dish suffered a catastrophic structural failure on December the 1st of 2020 when the remaining cables for the antenna and the dome assembly failed, sending these components plunging 450 feet onto the dish below. The National Science Foundation had already announced plans to decommission and dismantle the telescope in November of 2020 before the total structural failure. So that is the Arecibo Telescope right there. Um, did I put that in here? I, th I want to put that in here too. The Arecibo Telescope um, right there. I've spoke about this telescope uh, once before, and um, you can see it right there. Look how powerful Hurricane um, Maria is. That's my middle name, Gina Maria. That's really interesting. But they called it Maria. So we can see the telescope right here. We can see some of the images of it. Um, it's hanging up high. Look at you. It was uh, the world's most powerful telescope in the whole entire world. Um, let's, look, let's look at these surprising facts really fast about it. I want to show this. Um, six surprising facts about the world's most powerful telescope right here. Let me put this in. 
and uh, I, I need to try to keep this uh, short just short and thank you for your comments on here um, the antennas no this is not that is it the Actima large millimeter supplementer array is the world's most powerful this is in Chile there's a telescope in Chile also Atacama it is ginormous right around that area you all it is ginormous Wow um, the Atacama it's designed to spot some of the most distant ancient galaxies ever seen and to probe the areas around young stars for planets in the for process of forming um, six things you need to know about this one uh, immense astronomy project it is ginormous um, it has 66 radio antennas uh, it took one back decade to build it was uh, sponsored by North America Europe East Asia with the cooperation of Chile Alma is the one eye of the sky on the sky it's um, I got to turn this off you all one eye of the sky and it is among the highest instruments on earth with an altitude of 16,570 feet above sea level level it purchased a top Shanjanator plateau it puts it above much of earth's atmosphere which blurs and distorts lights it is the driest places on earth uh, in Chile the Atacama Desert um, the dishes are nearly perfect um, dozens of them with none deviating from an exact parabola by more than 20 micrometers it uh, prevents any incoming radio waves from being lost this is one cool telescope uh, the electronic detector called the front end that amplifies and converts the radio signals collected must be kept at a chilling 4 Kelvin degrees minus 452 degrees Fahrenheit or minus 269 degrees Celsius to prevent introducing noises to the signal the groundbreaking observatory promises to reveal many new secrets to the cosmos um, I think uh, let me see if I put this in in space.com you all I did I put that in there so we've got this and um, we've got Hurricane Maria right here if we can get over to it if it wants us to in the meantime um, these telescopes uh, were suffered damage when a Muamua came through and a Muamua is a uh, it's not just an asteroid it is a ship it's our first interstellar visitor look at this uh, path of this um, Hurricane Maria right there so um, I think that um, this Amuamua right here the first observed interstellar asteroid the first messenger from afar and it was being propelled by its own force some kind of force was propelling it um, so I just find it very um, coincidental that during this time the scientists were not able to have access to the Arecibo telescope in Puerto Rico because Hurricane Maria decided it was going to come through around about that time also and um, it's not a um, what they say like comet or asteroid it's not it's something much greater and um, why did they finish off that telescope uh, with the earthquake in 2019 and then 2020 boom it's gone it's gone so um, I've got another interesting video I'm going to do this evening and it involves dark matter CERN lightning strikes and um, how it's all tied together and all the many different ways they're searching for dark matter and warm hose uh, creating the warm hose sending negative energy through the warm hose trying to lure out lure out whatever 
that's inside these worm holes or these black holes, trying to get it to come out. It's antimatter. Uh, so I'm going to go, you all. This Amuamua is a, it's a ship. And um, it's from far away. And I don't think they wanted all the information gathered on it. They don't want us to know. But something's up. Something major, major is up. Um, so with that being said, hello wherever you are in any part of the world. Hello. From my heart to yours, love you. Have a wonderful rest of your evening. Thank you for your comments. Thank you, moderators, for being on here.